are here in Jerusalem's old city in Christchurch. I would like to start with a story that I experienced years ago in China. I was invited to speak to a house group leaders gathering in a city in China. Those house group leaders, they represented close to a million believers in this area. And they told me very excitingly that I was the first person from Israel to share to them about Israel. And uh, I started with the ABC about why it's important to bless Israel. And I very quickly realized that those people knew everything I was sharing to them. At the end, I asked them, so who did teach you about that? And I never will forget the amazing look on the face of the pastor. He looked at me and he says, Jürgen, what do you mean who taught us? This is all in the Bible. And talking to him, it made me think, what happened in the church that a teaching that so obviously is in the, in the Bible that Chinese Christians understood it by reading the Bible is, has become so misunderstood and misrepresented by the church over the last 2000 years. It's even more amazing if you look at the teachings of Paul. Paul had a very deep concern and love for his own people, the Jewish people. We need to understand even the early church in Jerusalem, it was an exclusive 100% Jewish community that was gathering here in the city. And when Paul later wrote about the Jewish people to the church in Rome, he said something like this, for example, in Romans 9 verse 3, he says, they, the Israelites, they, to them belong the adoption, to them belong the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, to them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, even Messiah was coming. That means Paul had an incredible understanding of the calling of the Jewish people. And then he also said, he says, even if they don't accept that Messiah, if they don't believe in Jesus, in Romans 11 verse 28, he says, they are still beloved for the sake of the fathers. The first reason why this breach between the church and the Jewish people was taking place is going back all the way to the early decades of Christianity. The Roman Empire was uh, coming in into the city of Jerusalem and uh, historians like Josephus, they are telling us that a large part of the population was sent into exile. And just a few decades later, with the uh, revolt of Bar Kokhba, Hadrian, who was the emperor at that time, expelled all the Jews that were living here in Jerusalem and most of the Jews that have been living in the land of Israel. That means by the year 110 and 120, there were virtually hardly any Jews left in the city of Jerusalem. And we see this also in the church that by the year 130, for the first time in church history, the very first bishop here in Jerusalem became a Gentile. That means for the global church, the center of gravity was shifting away from Jerusalem. It was shifting to Constantinople. It was shifting to the city of Rome, where people were looking from now on in the future for direction regarding Christianity. And this was the beginning of the preach. Constantine has been the first emperor who accepted Christianity as his own personal religion. And within a few years, he declared Christianity as the state religion of the entire Roman Empire. Within a few years, in the year 325, he called forth for the first council, the very first council after the council in Book of Acts chapter 15, where he united the church together and there are a whole series of different doctrines. And one of them was how to celebrate the feasts of the Bible. His main attention was on the Feast of Passover or the Feast of Easter, how he liked to call it. And he felt it, it's not appropriate to celebrate the most holy festival of all festivals in Christianity according to Jewish tradition. He was writing to the churches in his empire in the following way, he says, Vi erklærer gode nyheter til dere. Vi feirer herved ikke lenger påske i tråd med traditionene til jødene. Det blir klart å være særskilt uverdig for den helligste av alle høytider å bli feiret i tråd med jødenes traditioner, som har tilsøtt sine hender med de verste forbrytelser og har forblindede øyne. La oss da ikke ha noe tilfelles med morderne av vår Herre. 
So that means that Constantine shifted away the most important holiday of Christianity from the biblical calendar that was given to us in the book of Exodus away to the Roman calendar as it was held in the Roman Empire. And he even took it a step further that he invented an entire new holiday that did not exist before because many Christians until that time still celebrated Shabbat as their weekly holy day, as the day where they would seek God. And he said it's inappropriate to keep that Jewish feast and he invented Sunday as a new day that the church should keep from now on. Again, the motivation was not a change in calendar, but a dissociation from Jewish traditions because he hated the Jews. And this would change forever the attitude of the church towards the Jewish people. It was not anymore like Paul said, the gospel was to the Jews first, but from now on it was extremely difficult for a Jewish person even to join the church. They could join the church only if they would stop celebrating their Jewish traditions and if they would adopt the Nicaean tradition of the Catholic Church. Also, they even had to change even their Jewish names into Gentile names. That means the church became a complete Gentile expression of their faith and it alienated many Jewish people from Christianity. Today we are living in an amazing time where we do see that this preach is being healed the Christian Embassy over the past decades had developed amazing friendships and partnerships with Jewish institutions all across the country. It really has become a friendship that reaches our heart and reaches the heart of the Jewish people. We are working in the communities bordering to Gaza to build bomb shelters together with a rabbi in that area. We are working in Haifa with the rabbi, the municipality and many officials to help Holocaust survivors in the entire country of Israel in our Haifa home for Holocaust survivors. We are working together with a Jewish agency to help Jewish people returning back to their homelands and many many more projects are underlining this new friendship that is taking place between the Jewish people and the church today. It has gone so far that just a few weeks ago Prime Minister Netanyahu in a public meeting declared that evangelical Christians Christians today, they have become the best friends of the state of Israel. And how amazing is that to think about that an ancient hatred that was going so deep that led to the Holocaust, to the Inquisition and many other atrocities that this group is con considered today as a strategic ally of the Jewish people. The prophet Malachi said that the Lord will send in the last day the prophet Elijah and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers to the fathers. And I do believe that these are the days in which we are living in, where this historic breach is being repaired right in front of our eyes. In conclusion, I want you to think and pray about what you can do to become a part of this amazing move of God that is taking place. I want to encourage you to align yourself with God's purposes that he has for the nation of Israel. You can become active in many different ways by praying for Israel. The word of God tells us that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Why don't you become a prayer partner of Israel even today and join the Isaiah 62 prayer campaign of the ICJ. Also get yourself acquainted in the word of God, what God is doing with the Jewish people. Study the Bible regarding his purposes with Israel. And if you are a pastor, why don't you even teach a series on Israel in your own church? And lastly, become practically engaged with what God is doing here in this land. Support one of the many projects here in the land of Israel or become a voice on behalf of Israel in your own country. And I know God is going to bless you for that.